This isn't just some normal Twitter beef between two guys in the NBA. No, no, no. This also exposes a flaw in the new media. You did the weakest move in NBA history. That's the reason why I don't like the media. So don't tell me nothing about being a sellout. Older on TV During the 80s, he got knocked the f out. This beef has been years in the making. Let's get into it. Y'all gonna sit on first take. You and Dominique Foxworth are going to sit on first take and say that Steph Curry will not be in the conversation for a championship yeah. in the yeah. next four yeah. years. Flashback. Curry, Curry got upset because Kendrick did not move his legs. Remember when in the third quarter of game two of the NBA Finals, this happens where Perkins doesn't move his legs and Curry almost slips and now there's a kerfuffle going on. <laughs> Steph Curry and Kendrick Perkins talking to each other. Yeah, they were talking for a while. It seemed like Steph Curry was offended and angry that you know, Perkins could have potentially injured him. And of course, Steph Curry in the fourth quarter does what Steph Curry does. Recover, shot clock winding down. Curry's going to have to put it up, launches it up, shot clock. Oh, he knocks it down! And of course, this made headlines where Kendrick Perkins then went on to say stuff like, well, you got to pick your battles sometimes. And unlike what Perkins initially thought, Curry seemed to have picked his battle wisely. Instead of really going into it with Perkins, he really just decided to dominate on the court. He went on to set a record for most three-pointers made in the NBA Finals game with nine, and five of those three-pointers came in that fourth quarter. Curry finds Green. Back to Curry, three-pointer, puts it in, and a foul! It's like Kendrick Perkins wanted Steph Curry to just go off like this. And now let's get into another beef he had. Two of Russ's old teammates practically tore down Twitter. Now it's early 2020 and Westbrook is being given a tribute by the OKC Thunder and Kendrick Perkins, well, he makes a statement. He is Mr. Thunder. Perk claims that Westbrook is the best Thunder ever and of course people have some problems with that and Perk responded. Hey, Kevin left the door open and Russ walked right in. Yeah, there's a lot of disagreement still on this issue and uh, guess who joined in? Yeah, and our starting center Kendrick Perkins averaged a whopping 2-3 and three during that season series. And it looked like Perk and KD won good terms, but this is where the beef gets worse. Boy, stop. You did the weakest move in NBA history, up on a team 3-1 in the Western Conference Finals, and then go join them the following season? Part of a champion right there. Come on, Perk. It was supposed to be a tribute for Westbrook. Now you're just beefing with KD. It's like, this is a bad look. And you, I'm, I hope you realize that. I want to apologize to Russell Westbrook because that activity on Twitter took away from his moment. Granted, Perk did apologize, but it's it's too late. The damage has been done, and it's like, okay, now you're talking about the whole beef instead of talking about Westbrook. They continue to just regurgitate the same old story, the same mm -hmm. old storylines. Well, KD, on his side, of course he has a problem with the media. He's said it for years, and it's like, I get it, man. I see why. Recreate beefs with players that are former that teammates, exist, right? and, and it's just... They blow everything out of proportion. Yeah, I it's just it. like, I see what you're doing, and I... And that's the reason why I don't like the media in the uh -huh. first place. And of course, Kevin Durant himself expanded on the whole, you know, KD perk beef that he had on Twitter. I'm going to announce why Russell is the greatest Thunder player ever. You knew that was a divisive mm -hmm. statement. You mm -hmm. knew that Talk people would, mm -hmm. yeah, you knew people would kind of like, oh, that's a shot at KD. Like, you know that. So my whole thing is like, you don't, like you said, you don't have to do that. You don't have to, to in order for you to praise Russell, got to shit on me. Perk, you just playing into that because you want a job and you want some notoriety in your profession, but we were friends before this. We actually we yeah, actually yeah, played basketball me, yeah. games before this. Like, we, I know your family, so why are you trying to use that tactic against one of your so-called brothers? Things just did not seem to get better in terms of the relationship months later. You had this whole situation with Kyrie now. If you take Kyrie Irving's brain and put it in a bird right now, guess what that bird is gonna do? Mm -hmm. It's gonna fly backward. Because Kyrie right now, he's confused. He's showing his lack of leadership. This was during the protest against police brutality, and of course, Kendrick Perkins was emotional. So Kyrie Irving, right now, you are the, the distraction. You are the distractor. And as with all Kendrick Perkins beef, they go on Twitter, and yeah, he went on to use expletives to explain that he could have gone harder on Kyrie, deleted that tweet, said, look, I still could have gone harder on Kyrie. And then you had people dissing Kendrick Perkins, and guess what? 
Kevin Durant came into it as well, replying to an Instagram post by calling Perkins a sellout. Then he retweeted the tweet that went on to diss Perkins for not being a good baller. I mean, this was getting intense. You could tell that this was starting to get personal. As with all Kendrick Perkins beef, you just knew he had to defend himself. I was one of the first ones to call out the NBA owners about uh, speaking out and taking action on what's going on in America, followed up by a phone conversation an hour and a half long with Danny Ainge. So don't tell me nothing about being a sellout. And he really did sound like he was about to cry there. Now, the following season, Curry is one of the top candidates for MVP, and LeBron James, amongst others, is saying that Stephen Curry should win the MVP. Steph has had, in my opinion, the, the best season uh, all year. That season Curry had last season rivals the MVP season he had in 2016. He broke his own record for most free pointers made. So who are you picking? And surprisingly, Perk was one of those that backed Curry. I'm going with Steph Curry. Now, why would I mention this? Why is that important in any way? Because obviously, when people talk about Perkins not liking the Warriors or you know saying things about the Warriors, it, it's important to take everything into account. How many titles do you see Steph Curry winning over the next four years? Because now we get into this viral clip where Kendrick Perkins and Dominique Foxworth look stupid. You know what? I, I, I hate to say this right now, but to be honest with you, I don't see the Golden State Warriors bringing home another championship. And here's why. So on one breath, you had Curry as MVP, because obviously, look at what he did last season. But on another breath, you say this. The question is, how many titles in the next four years? So we go, we go, y'all go sit on first take. You and Dominique Foxworth are going to sit on first take and say that Steph. Now we get the point, right? Kendrick Perkins had to take that age poorly. You know, but obviously that's not where the beef ends with him and the Warriors and Draymond and Curry. No, no, it, it keeps going, man. It keeps going. <laughs> Does Curry need another title? to solidify his legacy. I did <clears throat> not come up with this question. I just want everyone. Well, 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 Molly, let me, let, me, let me say this. It's not the title, okay? It's the title along with the finals MVP. And let me, tell you, let me tell you why. When I look at, man, if you don't fix your body language when I'm talking to you, all right? <laughs> so please pay attention to what Perkins has to say because uh, we're gonna get back to that one later. And all I'm saying is, if he want to move from being in the top 15 greatest of all time to the top 10 player of all time, he has to get that finals MVP trophy under his belt. The Warriors were leading the series 3-1, to one, but then got blown out by the Grizzlies. It was one of those nights that really just made the Warriors look horrible. And of course, Steve Kerr wasn't coaching them as well. We got our ass kicked. That's all right. It happens. Now, why is this particular event so relevant? Because as far as this year, this is where the Draymond, the Kendrick Perkins beef really started. So, yes, they're going to get past Memphis, but can they get past Phoenix? If they get past Phoenix, can they beat the Milwaukee? Can they beat the Boston? Can they beat the Miami Heat? No, they're playing bad basketball. You don't get a spanking like that and say that you're contending for a title in the closeout game. It's one thing to criticize the Warriors and the poor play. I mean, they'll tell you how bad they played that game. But Perkins, he went a bit further by criticizing Draymond himself. Draymond Green used to look at the basket. Like, it was moments where we used to see Draymond Green go for 25 or 30. Mm. I'm watching them last night. He's not even looking to score. Mm. That's not the Draymond Green of old, so this is not the same Warriors team as and old. of course, Draymond, he's going to respond to whatever you have to say about him. Someone came to my phone earlier. A guy saying I'm scared to shoot the basketball. Like, that's scared and needed in the same senses as, like, brutal, you know. But you got a, a big ogre on TV talking about what Draymond said ain't the gospel. It is the gospel. What I say is the gospel. And at first, we weren't sure if he was really referring to Kendrick Perkins here. You know, when, when, when you got people out there just talking out the side of their neck, you know, or anybody can make the pass Draymond make, like, that's just stupid. I mean, <laughs> these are people who get employed to talk on TV about our game. In Draymond style, he makes it clear to us who he's referring to. Anybody can make that pass. You make that pass. We'd love to see it. I, I played against the guy, by the way. I'm talking about Kendrick Perkins, for those of y'all that don't know. I've never 
duck and no smoke. Why do these beefs always have to go back to Twitter? Yeah, he posted this video up to Twitter and responds in a way only Perk can. Ogre, ogre, whatever you, what, what you call me? Hey, listen, man, you ain't handsome. You damn sure ain't cute. And it seemed like Kendrick deleted that tweet because now Draymond claps back in the Instagram story saying, that he stands on his word and that he doesn't delete tweets and boy oh boy. Now the talk is on Steph Curry whether or not he can win his first finals MVP, whether or not he solidifies himself in the top 10. If he goes on to win a, a fourth NBA title with a finals MVP, forget the top 10 list, forget, forget the greatest point guard of all time, he's going to be on the NBA Mount Rushmore, period. Perkins would put Steph Curry over Magic Johnson, okay, okay. Now, Draymond Green, he had his whole kerfuffle saying that Steph Curry was double teamed way more than Kevin Durant. People had problems with that. Even KD came back and clapped back. And Perkins, well, he had his take as well. Nobody ever questioned Steph Curry greatness. So for Draymond to say that is weird to me. Nobody ever said that he needed to win a finals MVP to solidify his greatness. A lot of people All he have, said though. was a lot of that have. a final. No, no, they haven't. No, they haven't. I've been on there arguing with these people. They've been saying that well, a finals MVP would end. Malika, you're wrong because Kendrick Perkins even did. Like, what is this? He said it himself. Why is he flip-flopping on this take? Okay, you know what? Let's just go ahead and get to the finals. Game one, the Warriors are leading by a lot in the fourth quarter, but then the Celtics come back on an improbable run. I mean, this was a miraculous run. Back to Horford for the lead. Boston up by three. It's all connected, folks. After this game in the finals, the Celtics obviously winning. Draymond, I mean, he was not worried at all. Oh, we'll be fine. We'll figure out the ways we can stop them from getting those threes and uh, and take them away. Now, Draymond, he did have a poor game shooting-wise, but he's the leader. He's supposed to say this. And Perkins joining up with the Boston media, he had something to say about it. That was a whole lot of line but for the simple fact... <laughs> Oh, we'll be fine. No, no, you won't. No, you won't. Now, he also had to pick on Draymond on national TV. We still not pointing out individuals, and I think you need yeah, an individual. you say everybody. Nah, that's easier Shit. to say. That's nah, a cop it's out. It's like Perkins has an agenda against Draymond. I'm going back to Draymond Green. Uh, Al Horford is doing what Draymond Green needs to do for the Warriors. And I get it, man. He had a bad game. But so did other guys. He's hesitant to take those shots. He has to take those shots. He has to be aggressive. He has to make those shots. And we begin to hear the same narrative he had on Draymond in the Memphis series. It has to be if Draymond Green could be the Draymond of old. If Draymond Green can't be the Draymond of old, the Warriors do not have a chance at winning this series. And hey, there's some truth to that. Like you've seen it with Draymond Green. But let's get into the Draymond beef with Cedric Maxwell now. Let me just say this to you, and I'm be as clear as I can. Well, hell, you that shit, wait a minute, well, hold on. That shit Draymond, Draymond Green was doing? During the 80s, he got knocked out. Out. And boy, oh boy, of course, Draymond responds. You know, what? one thing that baffles me about the 80s or the 90s or whatever you want to call when basketball was so much more physical is some of the guys that be talking weren't the guys that was punching people. As a person that's never watched the NBA in the 80s, I mean, there may be some truth to it, but there may not be. There's clips out there showing that there is some truth to it. Now, Kendrick Perkins, guess on whose side he's on. And all Cedric Mix, as Maxwell said was, if you were in the 80s or 90s and you did that, you would you would have got swung on. And that's the facts. And I get where Perkins is coming from. I also get what Cedric Maxwell is trying to say. And if he didn't understand that part, well, Cedric himself came in to clarify it. It's not about Draymond Green and I, but... I was just pointing out, in the 80s, there were some guys like Kermit Washington, there was Akeem Olajuwon, there were a bunch of guys who were mean, tough guys. And a lot of the shenanigans that's going on in the game right now with Draymond, that wouldn't have been tolerated during the 80s. Now, Cedric, he could not resist getting into more trouble. Draymond wasn't even born when I was around I was playing, saying, was hey, he? I don't, let me, see, let me see, let me do the math here. Max, don't get Draymond, caught ask your daddy who I was, okay? That's how that goes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now Curry and the Warriors, they won the title. Curry is finally named finals MVP. Oh man, the legacy talks can begin now. Steph Curry top 10. And of course they went back and revisited the take that aged so poorly. Cause Steph Curry, well, he still remembers. Um. 
clearly remember some experts and talking heads putting up the big zero of how many championships we would have going forward because of everything that we went through. So, And of course, Kendrick, I mean, he wasn't too mad about it. And whether it's me, whether it's you, mm -hmm. whether it's Monica, if they're going to use us as motivation, well, hell, have at it. Because guess what? He's making me famous. <laughs> well, look, at Dominic Foxworth. Engagement. <laughs> engagement. You know what? Draymond also knows a little bit about that engagement. He makes sure to rile them up in the parade. I'm just going to continue to destroy people on Twitter, as I have been. You got the pettiness from Curry. You got the pettiness from Draymond. Oh, it's just beautiful. I said it all. Shut up. Shut up! Man, Draymond, yeah, have your fun, man. It's been a great season for them. And of course, he actually made do on his promise during the draft. Wouldn't you know what Kendrick would be the target? Our friend Big Perk, mm -hmm. he played for the Oklahoma City Thunder. And also, he is known for his famous pep talk. So, Big Perk, what do you got for the big fella? You know what? I'm just going to tell you to be ready. I know that you are. And when I say be ready, when I think about the Oklahoma City Thunder, it's a first-class organization from top to bottom. Player performance, when you talk about guys like Donnie Strack, who's in the uh, athletic department, Sam Presti has put together not only a hell of a facility, but a hell of a staff. Now we're getting closer to the present moment, where now he's on the J.J. Reddick podcast, and he has something to say. I got a confession. Like, let me tell you, so... I don't even want to replay what he had to say. I'll just sum it up for you now. In 2008, when the Celtics were playing the Cavs in a series in the second round, LeBron James, of course, he was dominating. He was already putting fear in the Celtics at 23. First home playoff loss in Celtics history. They'll lose by 29. In the battle that would go to seven games, you had Kendrick Perkins saying that he prayed that LeBron James would get hurt. Here he is missing a free throw so badly that he didn't even need to move to get the rebound. A monster on the boards in the first four minutes. Pierce hits a three. Paul Pierce lighting it up to start. And a Celtics lead by eight. I couldn't tell you how many minutes Kendrick played in this game seven. Because, well, it doesn't matter. The Celtics still were able to pull it off. The Celtics are going back to the Eastern Conference Finals. How badly hurt did Perk wanted LeBron to be for that game seven? You were praying that he had a, a sprained ankle. No, or no, that maybe he had a no, stomach no, bug. No, a, a stomach <laughs> bug or a sprained ankle, he still had a chance to play. <laughs> I did not want him to play in this game seven. Now he alluded to something as bad as a torn ACL. Oh my, that's just, that's just horrible. He also addressed the alleged beef he had with Draymond. Can't let nobody disturb my peace. I'm going to sleep every single night with the AC on 60 and the fan blowing in my face. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm not I'm not beefing with nobody. Like, Dr Draymond is great, but I love his competitive nature. Like, he's not going to shut up. I'm not going to shut up. It was part of it. But, again, I don't want him to change. Continue to be who he is, right? And now we get to the most recent iteration of this beef where Draymond goes on his podcast. I mean, he just goes after all of his critics. Winning the NBA Finals, for those of you that don't understand, it is the smallest edge. He first had to educate us on what it took to really win a championship. And of course, he had to take aim at Perk. And because all these dumb talking heads and never done it, they don't understand it. Even the one that has done it don't act like he's done it because he's an idiot and a moron and wasn't really that good of a player. And so... I'm talking about Kendrick Perkins, by the way. Draymond even went as far as to criticize Perkins for being not only a homer, but then also going on national TV. Kendrick Perkins going on first take and then going on the Boston Celtics home TV show. Like, yeah, we're going for the Celtics. Dude, you were just doing national TV about these games. And I agree, man. I get that the lines are blurred sometimes. But yeah, that's just out of line, man. You can't be doing stuff like that. You go up here acting like him. You don't have to do that, buddy. You play. You did it. Go talk about it. Or can you not? I'd hope that you can. With all these hot takes you make, you should be able to. You don't have to act like that, my man. You don't have to go up there. You go from being enforcer to How does that happen? This dude really just called Perk a raccoon. And I know the people that agree with Draymond here, they point to this outfit choice that Perkins had. But this was just a bit. I mean, he even dressed up as a doctor to talk about Tatum. Um, He has anxiety. Um, he's a bit scared. 
And that's what he's diagnosed with. When it Can't believe he actually said that on national TV, man. Oh, my. That's crazy. Now, Perk, of course he responded back. And this time, he went in. What, you mad? You mad because I'm doing it my way and it's happened to work? I'm doing it my way. I ain't got to do it your way. I'm doing it my way. And I like it that Perkins responded that way. But you just knew that Draymond would come at your throat after what you said on JJ Reddick's podcast. What? Are you kidding me? You actually thought that was okay to admit? But I think Draymond, he went a bit too far here. So for you to prey on another man downfall, that's a character flaw, my man. If you prey on somebody downfall once, you gonna prey on it again. Perkins, of course, he did a wrong thing. That was just disgusting. But him confessing, you have to give him the space to do that, right? If he wants to do it on TV, so be it, right? Obviously, you're going to have a problem with it. But Perk, he knows he's wrong here. Now, Cedric Maxwell, the beef he had with Draymond. Yeah, Draymond also came back at him and clapped back at him. <laughs> because you walking around talking about you're going to punch someone in the mouth or somebody will get punched in the mouth. Punching in the mouth has absolutely nothing to do with basketball. The reason why I even reference this beef he had with Cedric is because when Draymond talks about what he does on the court, it's, it's different, right? It's different. I'm playing basketball and I'm trying to gain an edge in a basketball game. See, when Draymond plays basketball, he does some things that are rather dirty. But for him, that's him gaining an edge on somebody. Him, he's trying to just, you know, rile them up. That's him gaining an edge, you see, it's n there's nothing wrong with what he did because he's just trying to win at the end of the day. And guess what? When Draymond has a problem with something, when he feels like he's the victim in the situation, oh, he's gonna go in on whoever he wants to, whether or not that's the media, and he'll even bring things back from eight years ago to do so. I was once suspended from Game 7 of the NBA Finals. I'm sorry, Game 5 of the NBA Finals. I'm certain that some media members had conversations with people about, in the league office, about whether I should be suspended or not for that game. Your opinion matters. Guess whose opinions also matter, especially in games? Officials, yeah, the referees that officiate the game. Just look at what Steve Jab had to say about Draymond getting a potential second tech. As a referee over there in the huddle, are you thinking about the fact that Draymond has one technical already? Absolutely, I think that's part of good officiating is the fact that you have to know who has the technical fouls. And in this situation, one of the players does. Is this enough to warrant an ejection is what you have to think about. But if it wasn't Draymond, if it wasn't in the finals, it'd obviously be an ejection. I mean, this is some backwards way of looking at the game. Draymond should have been ejected at least twice in the series. At the very least, he should have been ejected for what he did to Jalen Brown. If you're being honest here, what happened, I think it should have been a technical. And I thought this was an interesting thing from Perkins to bring up here. You all barking no bite. We know this. The NBA brothers know this. A lot of them that's talking behind you, behind your back with the whispers, they know this. They know you not go do nothing. This is proven. This is facts. We know that. So, one, stop with all the tough talk. And that's the thing with players playing in the NBA that also have a voice. That means they also have an agenda. The new media is here to stay. And we're taking this thing over. You know why? Because people don't want to hear that old, dried up, tired. Uh, stuff that you talking about nobody want to hear that no more and i gotta be honest i like the voices that are coming out in the nba now with jj reddick and draymond green now cj mccollum you got so many guys that have a platform now it's beautiful but on the same side of the coin you can't leave it up to them to analyze the whole league and certain storylines because some of those storylines they're involved in some of them they have friends that are involved in the storylines these guys are brothers at the end of the day they're going to stick up for each other more than anything. And if not, you know, Patrick Beverly with Chris Paul, you know, you, there's, there's rivalries too that are going to make it so that you're going to go after somebody in an unfair manner. And you could see it here with Draymond. He's willing to go after all his critics and it's beautiful to watch him rant. But he's also not going to admit some of the faults he has. And that's why there's other voices out there that aren't just NBA players, but they're also in the media. They're also, you know, just people like me. Just talking, right? And of course, they actually play the game. So they have a unique perspective. A lot of what they say bears a lot more weight. The new media, the old media, they're both going to stick around because there's demand for both at the end of the day. You're never going to see a player like Draymond criticize KD the way I did in this video. And if you want to know what I'm talking about, go and check it out, man. It's one of my funniest videos to date. Also, 
I'm noticing a lot of people subscribing on my second channel. That's insane. Honestly, you guys are great, man. You guys have been supporting me for a while now, and I love it, man. I'm going to keep this going. I'm going to see how far I can go with this. Have a great one. Peace out.